These cornfield gladiators have something that grips you intensely. Host grips the ear with his left hand, slash bangs with the hook on his right, and peels the husk from the ear. It started in 1922. About 800 people showed up to watch the first tournament. Six years later, in 1928, it had become a national championship. By 1930, crowds had swelled to 30,000. In 1935, 110,000 people showed up in Indiana to cheer for their champions. Newsreel crews began filming the event. The closing dynamite blast echoed throughout the ground. The new monarch of the nation's most grueling sport. 80 minutes, no breaks, no water. Winners were idolized, featured in national media, and paid to endorse products. Women would propose marriage to them. The 1940 competition had one of the largest crowds for a one-day athletic event in the history of the country, rivaling even the Indianapolis 500 car race. And suddenly, it was all over. We were at war. Contests have started again and continue across the Midwest. We intend to tell this story. Our documentary and teacher's guide will showcase this traditional farm skill and the values celebrated throughout the Midwest during corn husking contests. Values like honesty, individualism, determination, work ethic, and self-sufficiency. Journalist Henry A. Wallace realized that these middle-class values were being eroded by the depression and the realities of the corporate bottom line. So Wallace decided to create a new sport to promote these values. He succeeded beyond all expectations. Workers and city dwellers with farming roots suffering during the Great Depression sought out contests like these to celebrate their heritage and reflect on better times. Husking champions showcasing traditional Midwestern values were idolized and admired as national heroes. In our documentary, the history of Midwestern corn husking contests will be covered through interviews with contestants and experts and with the use of early artifacts, photographs, broadcasts, and films. We will tell the stories of early corn harvesting, husking aids and techniques, the contests, the huskers, and their fame. We will explain the effect that the Great Depression had on these contests and the difficult transition from an agrarian to an urban industrial society. We will interview farmers who were actual contestants in the 30s and 40s, as well as historians, authors, and at least one announcer who broadcast these events on the radio, allowing us to describe the events from a first-hand point of view. Help us tell their story. Real top-notch huskers cannot appreciate the different kind of special thrill which attracts this crowd. It is entirely different from seeing a 40-yard pass go for a touchdown or watching a baseball king swat one into the stands. 